It's an historic day in Chapel Hill and on the ACC Network as the legendary UNC women's soccer team, winners of 22 national championships, play their first ever game in the spectacular UNC Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium. It's the Big Ten's Indiana Hoosiers against the ACC's North Carolina Tar Heels. Alongside Kyle Straub, I'm Dean Linke. Delighted to be with you after a lengthy weather delay as we get you set for this one. A game all about first. First game of the season for both sides. First UNC game in the soccer stadium and the comeback of Miss Russo. And North Carolina is going to be really happy to have her back on the pitch. Really dangerous offensive player can strike from distance off the ball she gets into the box and can really finish off of set pieces and when all else fails she can just create for herself she's got that extra gear to get around the corner almost unstoppable 1v1 and you alluded to it she was hurt last year right before the postseason it was a big loss for North Carolina they were able to get to that title game but maybe she would have been enough to push them over the edge Indiana, they've got a brand new head coach. We'll talk more about him, but they also have a key transfer from Wake Forest playing in the back. Olivia Voss, just a sophomore, but really going to be a leader for this Indiana team because she played 16 games with Wake Forest last year, starting 13 of them. Got that experience in the postseason. They went to the third round, and the Big Ten recognized that. They named her to the preseason All-Big Ten team. Well, you mentioned preseason all-everything. How about Brianna Pinto? She's on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list as well, leading the Tar Heels. We'll have the lineups and the kickoff. Indiana, North Carolina women's soccer on the ACC Network. Almost two hour delay, not going to slow us down as finally the UNC women's soccer team get to play an official game in the beautiful North Carolina soccer and lacrosse stadium. It's the Hoosiers and the Tar Heels. Of course, the Tar Heels led by Anson Dorrance in his 41st season, 22 national championships, 21 ACC regular season titles and 21 ACC tournament titles. I'm not really sure what you fill in with after all of those accolades you just listed off. Hall of Famer, the best that's done it, and he's hungry. Talking to him before this uh, this season started, before this stadium opened, he said, we want to get North Carolina back to the program that we had it at. 
They've been in the national championship game back-to-back -back years, but that's not good enough for Anson Dorrance, though. Assisted by Damon Nahas and Chris Dukar and a brand new head coach, Erwin Van Benekom. But we know him around here four amazing years at Duke, including two great runs in the College Cup. And if you take just his four years as an assistant coach there, it was the best four-year run that the Duke program has ever had. And that's saying a lot. He's really energetic. He's going to turn this Indiana program around. It might not happen this year, but that enthusiasm, that energy, and the knowledge that he has, one of the best young minds in the game. Came with a big endorsement from Robbie Church, whose Duke team won earlier 2-0 over LaSalle right here. And then the lightning came in Kyle Straub, and it was right on top of this beautiful stadium. It was. A two-hour delay, though, for this team, it's nothing. They've been waiting two years to be in this stadium and be able to play at home on campus here in Chapel Hill. They've been having to play in carry the last couple of years. I'm sure the butterflies are there like it's game one of playing when you're a little kid. All right, let's talk goalkeepers for the UNC Tar Heels. It has been routine for Anson and his staff to go with two goalkeepers. That'll be the same today. And Claudia Dickey is going to play, but he says, I want to give my veteran the option of playing in the second half, and then we have him for overtime. So Mars Josephson, a really stellar freshman that was brought in, going to get the start for the first 45. We'll see how she does on the stage. Meanwhile, for Indiana, they've got the first-year head coach, but in the goal, Bethany Copel, she's played pretty much every minute since arriving in Bloomington. And that's going to be big for this Indiana team, to have her as well as Vos in front of her when you're a team that's trying to find an identity and become a new school or a new team because you've got a new coach. starts with the defense. If you can limit goals, you're going to be in games. Formation-wise, Anson Dorrance will come out in a familiar 3-4-3. The difference will be it's not your normal diamond with a holding mid and an attacking mid. And the reason is you've got Taylor Otto and Brianna Pinto side by side, and he's going to let them work their magic. And he said, and this is a big one, it's the first time he's ever had two people in the middle center there that he trusts enough that allow them to play this this formation and we'll see how it goes with that flat 3-4-3 he also said this formation it kind of opens up to individual talents so watch for those players up top to kind of create and have a little more space meanwhile indiana talking about starting with three in the back but the good thing about erwin van benicom he said against this north carolina team it will look like there's five in the back and right now there's a straight line of five in red for indiana yeah if you're looking at the screen it before that ball was played. It looks like a 5-3-2, but that's because they've got the flexibility of being able to drop a player from the midfield back. If they need to slow down this North Carolina defense, they're also going to look to use that as a counterattack and get some balls in over the top. The Tar Heels in their home whites, Indiana in their visiting reds. The 2019 women's college soccer season begins today. Results already in, and after a near two-hour delay, we are rolling here in Chapel Hill. This place is incredible. Talk about first as well, the production, the control room for North Carolina, amazing. I got a chance to go up there yesterday and get a little bit of a tour and, and look around, and the building isn't completely done. There's still some odds and ends that need to get patched up, but, man, it is a beautiful facility, and with the ACC network kicking off, you wouldn't expect anything less. Knocked out of there by Indiana. How about that difference? 41 years for Anson Dorrance, first year for Erwin Van Bennekom. He did say, he's like, look, if I can hang 40 years in Bloomington and win eight national championships like the Indiana men's soccer team, I'll be in a good place. You can stick around 40 years at any job. You've done a heck of a job. <laughs> Tar Heels controlling possession early. This is what North Carolina is going to do. They're going to want to play a possession game where they dominate the ball for the most part and try and work up through the midfield. Great little touch there by Pinto to get it out wide. Deflected, and it'll be off of North Carolina and back as a goal kick. Emily Fox, the junior. Didn't talk about her in the open, but a big time player for North Carolina though. Yeah, on the USA under 20 World Cup. She's also got caps for the full national team and a lot of speculation early on that she'll make the Olympic team for US, which is next year as they play it out of the back, heavy pressure. There's that high pressure from North Carolina. 
one of the staples of Ants Endurance's 40 years, now 41. Apply that high pressure, keep the ball in the attacking third, good things are going to happen for you. Veteran Morgan Goff, who has put her time in and gets a chance to start now as a senior. There's Goff. What a lovely touch from Pinto as she gets it over to Jones. Now tracking back is Miss Russo. Broke her leg against Wake Forest last regular season game and as you said, not available for the postseason as they fell to Florida State in both the ACC tournament final and the NCAA final. Dancy with it, North Carolina. First shot and handled there by Copel. That was some real good footwork right there by Rachel Jones. Yeah, I actually called that game last year, North Carolina against Wake Forest. The Tar Heels were riding high, finished off an undefeated regular season in ACC play. And then in the second half to get that news that your top scorer is going to be lost for the postseason. North Carolina will build it out of the back. We're just five minutes in, no score. The Tar Heels and the Hoosiers. This game was not on the schedule when new Indiana head coach Erwin Van Benekom took the job at Indiana, but he said Anson Dorrance is pretty convincing one, and he felt like there was nothing to lose for this Indiana team to have the experience of playing a legendary program like North Carolina. It's just a, it's such a tough thing to pass up, especially when you're a new coach, you're trying to establish where you're going to be. Go ahead and, and measure up against the best right away. That's why you know what kind of work you have to do and where you stand. So here comes Russo. North Carolina has got several stars from England. Meanwhile, we mentioned Bo, she's from Poland, but there's a lot of Canadian players for the Indiana team. It's loose. We saw Goff run past it, drop to Pinto. Pinto, I feel like she's gonna have a breakout year, exciting young player. Had a, a good the, year last year. Yeah, a lot of the talk with Anson before this game was about Brianna Pinto. Even though she's just a sophomore, really expects her to take a huge step from last year. And that's saying something because she had such a good freshman campaign. And you're seeing Otto and Pinto side by side, just like he said they would be. Goff trying to work the left side, knocked out of bounds off of Indiana, throw in North Carolina. Showing is Gambone, one of several talented freshmen on this North Carolina team, as always. And we and talked about the flat 3-4-3, three, three, and the, the difference between that and the diamond is those two in the middle, the flankers, they've got to be able to both get up on the offensive side as well as track back and play some defense. Otto and Pinto are elite at both sides of the ball. North Carolina coming up a 21-4-2 season, oh so close to their 23rd national championship falling to Florida State just down the road at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary in the final as the last national championship won is 2012. They've been close though a couple times here in the last few years and Anson just re-signing for five more years as he still has that fire to bring home some national championships. That was very easy to tell when we had that conversation with him a few days ago that the competitive drive has not wavered at all for Anson. Indiana. If anything, Dean, I think maybe it's been reinvigorated because they've been so close but haven't been able to win that national championship, where in previous parts of this tenure, it was year after year they were winning that title. North Carolina. Jones will drop it as Gambone will check back. Keep in mind that North Carolina will continue to play close to 20 players in this game as Anson Dorrance has already shared with us what we can call the second line <laughs> where multiple players will come in and they'll switch formations. It's almost like a, a hockey game sometimes when you're watching North Carolina play because they can go so deep. It's just line after line that gets brought in. And that's one of the ways that they're able to keep the success that they do is you run teams down. You have fresh legs always out there. Other teams can't go as deep. And by the time you get into the 
70th, 80th minute. You're starting to see some tired legs on the opponent. Two key losses for the Tar Heels. Samantha Leshnack, outstanding in goal. And then Julia Ashley, who Anson Dorrance called one of the best leaders he's ever had. Six goals and ten assists for Julia Ashley, who has moved on along with Miss Leshnack to the pros. Free kick opportunity here for the Tar Heels. One bounce. No problem for Copo as it was Lata Wubenmoy taking that free kick. Wubenmoy wants to drive that ball a little bit more instead of letting it float through the air and hook towards the back post. Get a little bit more of a drive, line drive on it and allow one of your players to make a run to the ball. Number two, North Carolina, Indiana. No score. This game was supposed to start around 6.35, but a long delay. First, the first game, right, Kyle, between Duke and LaSalle was delayed about, about 50, 50 minutes. 50 minutes, yeah. And that was because of a storm that came through. And I mean, it's August in North Carolina. You're going to expect that. But a little unlikely to have a storm, a game come and get played, and then a storm right after it. It was just kind of perfect timing or unperfect timing for this game to get started anywhere near what the original start date was. job by Goff just to get a piece of it as Indiana was looking to work the near side flank right in front of this beautiful press box. This facility has got to be considered one of the best facilities for college soccer and college lacrosse. I mean, you're right on top of the action. And the views are so different from normal stadiums that you go to where typically one end versus the other is mirrored, so you have the same exact look. Not the case. You can see on the right side of the screen, it's open behind the goal where you have a brick wall with some seats above it on the left side. And that's where the coaches' offices are as well for the soccer and lacrosse teams. I also, Dean, I like how on the far side where the benches are, those bleachers are kind of steep. So no matter where you're sitting, you feel like you're right on top of the field. Russo had it inside the 18. I thought maybe she was going to turn with it and take a shot. She brought it back instead. And I'm really interested to see how she plays, how those last touches go for her, because you miss time like she did because of an injury like that. It's going to take a little bit to get back to full 100%. Tar Heels, again, building out of the back. Nice ball. Good ball over, but handled there by Kopel, who took charge and brought it in. And there's the danger of Alessia Russo. Well away from the goal, but just real quick, turns the hips and puts a perfect ball to the far side. Rachel Jones was right there on the opposite end if the keeper didn't grab it out of the air. Kopel boots it to midfield. Second ball won by Otto. Picked up by Jones. Good job by Russo to show. Pass intended for Pinto not there. It'll come all the way back. Right now you can see that five back system for Erwin Van Bennekom and a lot of possession for the Tar Heels so far. And it even feels like they've maybe even dropped another player back when you see him. Next time Carolina has possession, they're now in more of a 5-4-1 formation, which is one player forward at midfield. So when you have those turnovers like Carolina just did, there's nobody to go get that ball for Indiana. Throw in for North Carolina. 41st season for Anson Dorrance. We send our best as we salute Bill Palladino, who retired prior to the season, 40 years alongside Anson Dorrance. Won't see him this year as he's going on to other endeavors, including being the assistant for the North Carolina Courage. This one down near the end line will be a corner kick, corner kick, Tar Heels. There's a player to really keep an eye on. Bridget Andrew Jeske, senior has been a starter her first three years, but she's been a starter up top. In this new system, she's now dropped back into the midfield as a wing, 
And Anson said it improved her game so much that he sees her possibly playing in the NWSL after. Pinto comes over. Pinto now. High lofted ball. Picked up by North Carolina. Back across and loose and in. The Tar Heels have struck first. The goal for North Carolina. You were just talking about Andrew Jeske, and there she is. You gotta love when a player makes you look good. Andrew Jeske found a loose ball. It looked like Cole had a play on it and just couldn't secure it. Take another look. A great job to be on the back end of this one. Taylor Otto plays it in, and it just looked like that ball snuck right through Copel's hands. So we get a better view from this side. It went right through the five hole. And Andrew Jeske, Johnny on the spot to put North Carolina out in front. Boy, you just caught it. That amazing freshman season. And last two years, still did okay, but even to Anson Doran's standards, not what he was expecting. And he thinks that she has showed those signs that she's going to have another breakout year. She's such a fast, quick player that putting her in the midfield kind of allows that athletic ability to shine a little bit more. So she doesn't just have to try and get behind the defense. She can make it happen in different ways. And sometimes you're going to just be in the box and be lucky. So the senior forward from Lutherville, Maryland, has North Carolina on top, one to nothing. Andrew Jeske started 25 of 27 games last season, but of course it was that breakout freshman campaign where she could do nothing wrong. She just felt like she was scoring every game. And it's tough sometimes. You, you discount what these young girls have to go through. You come on campus at North Carolina, you have that successful freshman year, and then all of a sudden you're starting to be compared to the lineage of that have come through Carolina and you look at man I've got to live up to that sometimes it can be a little daunting they've had one or two good players come through here in Anson's time and you mentioned it before Dino no longer with the team I mean he was on the sideline for 40 years with Anson or, or close to it no all 40 yeah, yeah it's going to be a, a huge loss for them and a huge hole to fill Good ball left side, Indiana. Searching for a corner. And they'll get one. It'll be a corner kick for the Indiana Hoosiers. If Indiana's going to want to stay in this game, they've got to take advantage of opportunities like this. Ball that was played from midfield, you're going to get a corner out of it. It's your first set piece. Make sure it's a quality one. Megan Scott, the senior. As we mentioned, a lot of Canadians on this Indiana team. Megan Scott, who her freshman year had seven assists, two goals and two assists her sophomore year. Last year, one goal and three assists. Corner kick, Indiana. High looping ball. Still loose and finally picked up by the freshman in goal, as we mentioned. We'll see Claudia Dickey in the second half, but good work there by Mars. Josephson came off the line, tried to play that ball in the air, and just was in too much of a crowd. Was caught in a little bit of an in-between spot there. Was helped out by the defense. And that's going to be key, Dean, for either goalie, whether it's Josephson or Claudia Dickey, who we expect to be in in the second half. Neither of them have much experience. Dickey didn't play a ton last year, even though she did see some time on the pitch. That pressure from North Carolina leads to another turnover. The high press system for the Tar Heels. Always with three forwards that if you want to stay on the field, you've got to do the work defensively. You've got, and you've got to run 100 miles an hour the entire time you're on the, the field. You'll get your rest when you get taken out. Turnover. But the pressure will start immediately. Look how hard it is just to get it out of your own 18. 
Now Indiana boots it long. Handled there by Goff as it rolls out of bounds. We can tell you that on Sunday at 2 Eastern, the defending national champion Florida State Seminoles kick off their second season, ranked number one against the 16th-ranked Wisconsin Badgers right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Visit getaccn.com to check for providers in your area. If you don't see your provider listed, contact them to demand they carry ACC Network. Here's Jones taken down. It'll be a free kick, North Carolina. He's got a half a step on Forbes and maybe a little frustration from Melanie as she pulls down Rachel Jones. Don't know that she had to. She had some help coming. But this will give North Carolina a great opportunity to try and double the score. And you mentioned Florida State being number one in the country, rightfully so. How about the fact that they were the seventh seed going into the ACC tournament, defeated North Carolina, not just in that ACC title game, but for the national championship as well. Well, when you talk to all of the ACC coaches, and all of them are fantastic, every single one of them, they say it's like playing in the NCAA tournament pretty yeah. much every week once ACC play starts. Taylor Otto looks interested, and so does Alessia Russo. Russo, perhaps more interested. Wearing that 1-9. Russo is going to take the shot down. Copel parries it away. It's still loose. North Carolina keeps it alive, and Pinto has made it 2-0. North Carolina. I need to see the replay of this one, but I'm pretty sure she just scored off of a heel kick. I think that ball got by her. She just reached out her right foot to put it in the back of the net. Again, it's Carolina getting that rebound and that ball just got in under feet. We told you Pinto is a special player. They expect her to really break out this season. Assist going to the freshman. Ellie Gambone from Clifton, Virginia, as she gets her first point. And Pinto, first goal of the season, and it's 2 nothing. Tar Heels on top. I think Irwin going to have to change some strategy here. I know that they were really packing in defensively, but that, that obviously hasn't worked so far in the game. You find yourself down 2 nothing. Maybe they should push forward a little more, try and get some numbers forward to keep the Tar Heels from having possession. Pressure there from Indiana. But booted out of danger by Josephson. The freshman from Apex, North Carolina, went to Apex Friendship High School and has spent a lot of time in camp with the North Carolina Courage, the reigning NWSL champions just down the road in Cary. Goff. So, so the Pinto goal assisted by Gambone, as we told you earlier. Gambone, one of the freshmen that Anson brought in this year, number four overall recruiting class for the Tar Heels. Two nothing North Carolina. The scary thing for other teams in the country is when we talked to Anson and we were talking about this stadium, he brought it up. The recruiting, he's already seen an impact because kids now come to this stadium. They see that the school has they see that the school has invested in this program and they're willing to put the money into it. And you have this brand new facility. They've seen an uptick in recruiting because you know North Carolina needed that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well said. Actually, you got to give both Carlos Samuano and Anson Dorrance and their entire staff and every single player a whole lot of credit. I mean, they were living like vagabonds. They were living out of their bags. They didn't have a home, and yet they kept on winning. They kept on going to college cups, even though they never didn't even have a home. They did. North Carolina, was, the women's program was in the national championship both years that they didn't have a home. Last year, the men, a little bit of an early exit from the NCAA tournament, but the year prior made it all the way to the College Cup as well. Ironically, they lost to Indiana at 
that College Cup, played in Philadelphia as the Indiana and UNC men's programs have had some epic battles over the years, usually in the NCAA tournament. They haven't met as many times on the women's side, just twice in North Carolina winning both of those games. Good job with the shield there, and then Josephson boots it long. It'll go off of Indiana and back to North Carolina, who leads it 2 nothing. Early doors, Andrew Jeske and Pinto with the two goals. All right, now it's time for the subs. As we told you, North Carolina planning to switch about this time from that 3-4-3 to more of a 4-2-1-3 or a 4-3-3. As we'll see Emily Fox slide out wide right, and then they'll move Bell and Wuben Moy, along with another freshman, Julia Dorsey, who he's really high on, who has a, got a full scholarship with Jenny Levy in the lacrosse team. And that should be no surprise. Morgan Goff is a two-sport athlete. Claudia Dickey is as well. She's here on a basketball scholarship. So we do expect to see Lexi Strickland get into the game as well, wearing number 12. Gambone, who's already got an assist. That would have been a brilliant strike, but couldn't get her body around it on the volley attempt. It'll be a goal kick, Indiana. I think she would have been better served if she tried to settle that one down and take a shot or find an open player. She had a, a teammate on each wing. So we are seeing now Fox drop back a little bit. Fox, Bell, Ruben Moy, and Dorsey is not in yet as Goff still stays out there, but we do expect to see Julia Dorsey come on for Goff sometime here in the first half. I think Madison Schultz, the senior out of Edmonds, Washington, is the only one who came in this time around on the subs, but that won't be the case as things go forward. Madison Schultz, the senior, wearing number one from Edmonds, Washington. And up until about a week ago, Anson wasn't quite sure who he's going to have starting at that left wing because Schultz was really pressing to break the top 11. Of course, Schultz from Washington. One of the things Anson Dorrance has always done a great job is going out to the West Coast and particularly paying tribute to the seniors, just like Dean Smith has always done, Roy Williams has always done. They'll be at Washington August 29th, this after they play Duke on Sunday, as Indiana is going to bring on a new player. As first-year head coach Erwin Van Bennekom is going to go to his bench. Just looking to get a little bit of a spark. They're not going to be as deep as North Carolina, but when you can get some players in there, Maybe give some legs a rest, especially early in the season, Dean. It's much quicker, much easier for the girls out there to get some tired, heavy legs. You're not in mid-season form yet. Bria Telemach, a freshman from East Lansing, Michigan. Got away from the Spartans to join the Hoosiers, and she's in there now, wearing number 16 in red for Indiana. 21 minutes remain, 2-0, North Carolina. Opening game, 2019 women's college soccer season. Alongside Kyle Straub, I'm Dean Linky. Delighted to be with you on ACC Network Extra. Launch day of the ACC Network took place a couple hours ago, Mr. Straub. Thought I was hopefully going to get home to maybe see some programming tonight, but the delays, they had other plans for me, so it's okay. We'll just stay here, be on the Network Extra, and call another great soccer game. Indeed. The network will be around. I can watch it tomorrow. Fox pushes forward, trying to find Schultz. Telemach, one of her first touches for the Hoosiers. If you're just joining us, early goals here for North Carolina. The second one coming from the talented Brianna Pinto. The first one coming from the senior, Bridget Andrzejewski. Right after Kyle Straub was singing her praises, right on cue. This one over the top, and too long, it'll be out of bounds.
can see Indiana not trying to play that ball over the top, but trying to build through the midfield shorter passes so they can keep possession. I think that's a smarter play because North Carolina plays that high pressure. It also gives the defense a little bit of a breather. Knocked back by Indiana. Andrew Jeske takes it away. He's got Schultz in front of her. Knocked out of bounds by Indiana. Pretty good crowd here. Definitely some people did leave before the game. There were a lot of people here getting ready for it, Kyle. Yeah, there's some people that left because of the delay. I also think there's probably some people who just didn't come out because, like you said, game one that took place earlier, there was a delay to that one even. Gambone, good little move. Explosive freshman stays with it. Gambone finally cleared out of there by Indiana. Picked up by Fox. Looking for options. Slides it to Otto. Superstar to superstar. This team is loaded, folks. A lot of international experience as well both representing the u.s for players like fox and then a ton of england youth national team representation on this tar heel team a foul is going to go against fox but gambone really impressed me though really strong with the ball at her feet she had two defenders one on her hip the entire time but was able to stave them off minutes remaining here in the first half. You talk about the, the English players. Lewis Joel is another one added to the roster this year and a really interesting story because there wasn't much tape for the coaches to look at. They recruited her and brought her on here because of two girls that are already on that pitch right now. Alessia Russo and lots of Wuben Moy saying, hey, Coach Dorrance, I think you need to bring this girl over. She'll fit well in our system. Look at Pinto, just absolutely ripped it away. Pinto now looking for options. She'll drop it back. Different level. Schultz now trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Good defending there by Indiana to win it back. That's outstanding one-on-one -on -one defending for the Hoosiers. It really was, and it was needed because North Carolina had numbers forward. It was Melanie Forbes who was able to step in front and win that ball from Schultz. Just two shots so far in this game. Both of them, two shots on goal, four shots now, four shots on goal, two of them in the back of the net for the Tar Heels. Indiana with just one shot. Copel, who's on it now, has had two saves. North Carolina has dominated this first half. You look up and see only four shots, and you think maybe that's a little bit low, but they've been four quality shots, and I think that's more important to Anson than just having a bigger number in the shot category. Copel. Good touch there by Hannah Nemeth, who's from Hungary. Played with both the U15 and U17 Hungary national team, and she's one of three triplets. Hannah, Flora, and Zonia. Her Two other sisters born on or about the same time. You don't see that every day. Triplets. North Carolina. Little stretch out and come back to Indiana. A little bit of miscommunication down in the right-hand corner by the Tar Heels. Gambone had started to break towards the sideline. Instead, the ball was played down towards the end line. Indiana will have UIC at home on Sunday. Then they'll go on the road to take on Murray State and Louisville. They start Big Ten play against Iowa on September 20th. A couple of freshmen just checked in. Ali Schlom for Indiana and for the Tar Heels, Haley Clanky. Clanky is one that Dorrance expects to have an impact on this team. Maybe not as much early in the season. She needs to still improve on some of the technical play in her game, but he said she's just a phenomenal athlete, though. So Clanky into the game. We're in number 26, the freshman from Lee's Summit, Missouri, Lee's Summit West High School. Pinto. To Schultz. 
Trying to find Clanky, making that run. I love the look there, just a little bit too much pace on it. Copel pings it long. Davidson, who has been a rock for Indiana, now a senior from Canada. Started almost every game, sort of about four or five since arriving in Bloomington. I think Indiana has a chance to really surprise some teams in the Big Ten this year. They've got three players, including Davidson, who are named Big Ten preseason. They're all, all Big Ten to the preseason. It's a nice foundation to start for Ben Benicom. Yeah, one of those was the player we highlighted in the open, Olivia Vos from Poland, who played for Tony Deleuze last year at Wake Forest. Obviously, Erwin Van Benicom knew her from having seen her when Duke played Wake Forest. And she was checking the transfer portal <laughs> routinely, trying to add some reinforcements as Indiana losing their top four goal scorers to graduation from a year ago. Indiana, by the way, got off to a rocking start last year as they won six, tied two, and lost one, but then finished two and seven down the stretch as Amy Burberry in her sixth year, great person, phenomenal coach, coming over from Karen Hoppe's Auburn team. And Indiana deciding to make a change. And that's a little bit reminiscent from game one with LaSalle, who got off to a really quick start last year. They got into conference play, and things started to slow down. And with talking with Coach Royal, the head coach for LaSalle, he said, you know, we want to make sure we're at our peak when conference play starts, and I think that's probably the same concept that Indiana is looking at. Pinto, a rare pass that was not on target, but one back by North Carolina's Andrew Jeske and Schultz, not afraid to get stuck in and win it back. Here comes the high pressure from Andrew Jeske again. Russo also there, as well as Clanky. They've got him completely pinned. And they win it back to Goff. That high pressure right now at this point in the game, Dean, is pinning Indiana so far back, they're just chipping it over the top of them, saying, all right, take possession, but just get it away from our 18. Taylor Otto in the 18. We'll get it out wide to Fox. Fox can beat you so quickly. Good ball over. Cleared by Indiana. Pinto's got time. Pinto, she can hit it from here, folks. Takes a strike, but... Does not get any real pace on it. Such good footwork from Fox to create some separation to get that cross off. And then Pinto picking up the rebound. Just didn't get her feet set and get that shot off in time before the defender came in. North Carolina continues to bring in new players as Izzy Cox, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, Grimsley High School. Big, tall presence at center forward. Five foot ten is into the game. As now you've got Clanky and Cox along with Schultz as the th three front runners. We talked about some of the losses that Carolina had coming into this year. Julia Ashley, one of the best leaders that Anson Doran says he's ever had on a team. You see how he replaces things. It's not a replenish. It's just who's next. You bring in a recruiting class, you're expected to play right away. Yeah, he's very open about the fact that when he brings you to North Carolina, he's going to get you playing time as he has taken advantage of the substitution rules for years. And it looks like he's getting ready to do so again. There's four or five white jerseys standing over at the scorer's table. And up 2 nothing, feeling pretty good with 10 minutes, 30 seconds left here in the first half. And if you've got the depth and there's no drop-off from one player to the other, I don't see why you wouldn't do this by bringing a lot of these players out between the 10 and 15-minute mark left here in the first half. You're giving them that much extra time to recover before they have to come out into the second half. And some of them may not even start the second half to get even more minutes of recovery. Good little turn by Cox. And then she'll lose it as Indiana does well to get behind the ball after the spin from Cox. Throw in here as here comes... Four more North Carolina players coming into the game. 
four new players. It looks like Maggie Pierce, a freshman from Cary, North Carolina. Crossroads Flex will come in wearing number 28 as Bridget Andrzejewski is going to head out. Alexis Strickland, a freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, Millbrook High School, wearing number 12, is going to come into the game. Rue Mucherera, wearing number three, the redshirt senior, will come into the game. She's been an exciting player. Every time she comes in, she goes 110% right She's at you. She's the energizer yeah. bunny off the bench. And Lois Joel, who... Kyle told you about earlier is also checked into the game. That last wave of four players now accounted for. It's outside the 18. Cox in that 5'10 frame. Knocked out of bounds off of the head of Cox, and it'll be a goal kick Indiana. Typically throughout Rue's career, she's come in in the first half a little bit earlier than she did now, but took the spring off, so she's still a little bit behind as far as the training and the the lungs go, so come in with about 10 minutes to go and ease her back into things. I told you about Anson Dorrance in those 22 titles. His record, 847, 74, and 40. They played 961 games. They've had 596 shutouts in those games. <laughs> I just don't have words for that one. The fact that he's been at this for now 41 years and he still has not lost 100 games blows my mind. That'll be a big story if it ever does happen. And it may not. A little touch by North Carolina. Better shield, though, from Indiana. And it'll come back to the Hoosiers. A little warning here from the ref. A little extra push there from Lois Joel, the junior, from England. Pretty easy to read what the referee is saying there. The hand just telling her, calm down a little bit. A little bit too intense there. Seven fifteen remaining here in the first half. Two nothing. Bridget Andrzejewski with the first goal. Brianna Pinto with the second for the 2 nothing lead for the Tar Heels. Certainly an exciting time for women's soccer. The U.S. women winning back-to-back -back World Cups. The International Champions Cup. Just completed. In fact, the powerhouse that is Lyon that stars Lucy Bronze, who I think is the best player in the world. I haven't seen a right back do the kind of thing she does. He played here at North Carolina, if you remember, for a single season and was a star at the World Cup. They came over and played North Carolina. And, boy, Anson Dorrance didn't hesitate when you asked him what's been the highlight so far in preseason, and that's what he picked. And understandably slow getting to go against a team like that. And we'll get into it a little more at halftime, but you go against a club team like that, best in the world, and come away with a draw, you've got to feel really good about yourself. Anson Dorrance on the United Soccer Coaches podcast today, also giving his take on equal pay and also on the candidates for the head coaching job for the U.S. women. As we remind you that the first ever World Cup, Anson Dorrance was the head coach leading the USA to a World Cup title back in 1991. While you were talking about his record, I was sitting here thinking to myself, we're not even talking about when he was coaching both the men and women's team here at UNC. The men's stuff not counted into his career record for what we gave you, but last year got over a thousand career wins between the two. Cox, Clanky, good ball far side. Terrera was over there, still loose. Picked up by Strickland. Sent back in by Pierce. Rumu Terrera. That was really good work there by Telemach to stay with it and win that ball away from Mucherera. Great 
Great job tucking in there by Emily Fox. Shot from distance and just talked about the Indiana player and down she goes as taking it right in the head there was Bria Telemach. Just a freshman, but you can see she's all over the place, sacrificing the body. She popped up right away. I think she's fine, but because that ball hit her in the head area, they're always going to come out and check it. Clock stopped with 4.38 remaining here in the first. A lot of firsts, as we told you, first game of the season for both sides. First UNC soccer game in this beautiful new stadium that took over two years to complete. First full production that UNC will do out of their shiny new control room. First year head coach for Indiana, Erwin Van Bennecombe. Great you to and be I, here for all of this. You and I talked a little bit about this before we got on air. Way back when you first started, when I first started, we're doing games and scaffolding here at Fetzer Field that were across the way on the track behind where the stands are. Now there's this big, huge indoor practice facility, beautiful stadium surrounding the field. It has come miles since a decade ago or two decades ago. Yeah, I didn't feel safe on that scaffolding either. Not at all, especially when the wind picked up. Ball sent across, trying to find Mucherera. Yeah, during the weather delay, in fact, the Indiana women's soccer team was in on the indoor field where Mac Brown takes care of business. Mac is back. That's pretty exciting for Tar Heel football fans. Really exciting. He's brought a, a buzz to the football program here and to the town. And that practice facility, it's the football practice indoor facility, the big gray building that you see there. But that's also something that both men's and women's soccer, as well as men's and women's lacrosse, can use during their seasons when the weather says so. Cox dancing with it, knocked out of bounds and show her in a corner kick, corner kick North Carolina. Since the substitutions, you can see the technical aspect of the game is a little bit off for North Carolina in that final third, but they're still keeping that pressure. They're still getting opportunities. Two nothing Tar Heels, they've not lost at home since September of 2016 when NC State beat them. Corner kick, top of the 18. Sent back in. Jarrera was waiting, but Indiana clears it. And it looks like Indiana content to try to just get through these final two minutes and 40 seconds, Kyle, and See if they can regroup down just 2 nothing at the half. Going to have to make some changes, but I think they can feel good about themselves. The first 10, 15 minutes, North Carolina not just dominated, but looked like they were going to put up four or five goals. Indiana weathered the storm, went down 2-0, but they have kind of kept things at the status quo since. North Carolina. Continues to string passes together. Joel, junior eligibility wise. Will come all the way through. Copel decides to retreat. Dangerous ball there. Yeah. Look at that. Three white jerseys. Just. It's like a shark with blood in the water. You see a loose ball and it's going towards the other goal. Everybody swarm. Been impressed with Macy Bell wearing number 25, the freshman in the back from Wichita, Kansas. She looks like another top quality center back as we talked about all those shutouts. Yeah, you think North Carolina, you think about that triple edge sword, you think about a lot of goals, but that shutout number and great defense has also been a key part of Anson Dorrance's phenomenal success. And that's part philosophy, part talent, and then the other part of it is getting these girls in that want to continue that, that trend. This is how many shutouts you're expected to get go out there trying best last year's team. 
at a certain point when you have the success that Carolina has, it's almost a competition within your own program, trying to best other teams. 45 seconds remaining here in the first. Two nothing North Carolina on top of Indiana. Erwin Van Benekom will hand the ball off. Knocked away again as Cox goes out of bounds first. Though it'll come back to Indiana, who probably will not be in a hurry here. Kind of pinned in most of this game and the final seconds will count down last thing Indiana wants to do is give it away here and they'll clear it and count it down and through 45 first game of the season brand new soccer and lacrosse stadium and it's 2-0 North Carolina on top of Indiana six shots from the Tar Heels dominant first half and four of those shots on frame Bridget Andrew Jeske in the 13th minute that moved to midfield immediately paying dividends and then Brianna Pinto with a highlight real goal it's a 2-0 Carolina lead so 2-0 Tar Heels here on ACT Network Extra took a little time to get it going, but then North Carolina with goals in the 13th with Andrew Jeske, and in the 17th from Pinto, has North Carolina on top of Indiana, two to nothing here in Chapel Hill. Bright lights shining down on the beautiful, spectacular UNC Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium. First time a soccer game officially has been played here. The UNC men's team played an exhibition game or two here, but 
officially opens up. North Carolina on top of Indiana by a score of 2 to nothing. Alongside Kyle Straub, I'm Dean Linky. Let's take a look at the ACC preseason poll. As you mentioned, I, I wouldn't want to play any of those teams. Not a single one of them. Nobody in there is an easy win. Most of them are going to be in the NCAA tournament. And the only reason they all won't be is because they're going to beat up on each other. But North Carolina didn't get the most first place votes but compiled the most points. They're the favorite to win their 23rd ACC championship. Hanson Dorrance never afraid to play some quality non-conference opponents to get ready for ACC action. And it starts on Sunday. I mean, they're in a pretty good team right now in Indiana, but eighth-ranked Duke last year, those two teams didn't play each other, and it was very odd. They said, we're going to fix it. They're playing twice this year. That one is a non-conference game, and then they will play at Duke a little bit later in the year as well. Let's take a look at the Big Ten preseason poll. The Big Ten, some quality teams at the top as well. As you always know, Penn State, Rutgers, well-coached team by Mike O'Neill, Wisconsin, Paula Wilkins, Indiana 12th. But as you said, they could surprise some teams. I said it a little while ago because I truly believe that they can. They've got some talent on this team. I think that their coach, as he gets that system in place a little bit more is going to make them a better team. I'd be surprised if they didn't finish in the top 10. Upcoming schedule for the Indiana Hoosiers. They'll be back home to take on UIC and then on the road for three of four. And we just said you don't want to play any of those teams in the ACC not too long in the future. They've got another one on the schedule playing at Louisville. So they're testing themselves early in this season so they can see what they need to work on before they get into Big Ten play. Favorite time of the year, the start of the college soccer season. And we've got it here in Chapel Hill where your halftime score is number two, North Carolina two, and the Indiana Hoosiers zero on ACC Network Extra.
the lightning, the weather has gone away. The students found out the UNC women are back at it. They're here now, and they're watching the Tar Heels with a 2-0 halftime lead here over the Indiana Hoosiers. North Carolina from the ACC, Indiana from the Big Ten. Good first half. Indiana, of course, first-year head coach Erwin Van Benekom was with Duke at Robbie Church, and you talk about making an impact. Robbie Church had nothing but high praise for Erwin Van Benekom. Rightfully so. He was there for four years. Those four years happened to be Duke's most successful four-year run ever. You see two College Cups appearances, finished fourth in the ACC last year, and he helped to produce a lot of talent, some of which is now playing in the NWSL. Expect the same thing will happen here at Indiana. It's just a matter of time. He's going to get it done in Hoosier land for sure. And a man who got it done for years alongside Anson Dorrance, Bill Palladino, stepping down, retiring. He's a legend as well. And my favorite thing when asking Coach Dorrance about Dino was a quote that he gave us. He said he was perfect because he's the opposite of me. On the sideline, I'm the shark in the water. And he was the big teddy bear that was there to kind of make everybody feel good. It was the fire and ice, and you need that in order to be successful. And those two had a fantastic run. So well said. The perfect foil. We wish Bill Palladino all the best. Halftime in Chapel Hill, North Carolina 2, Indiana 0. We'll be back with a second half kick after this. We told you incredible time for women's soccer, right? Megan Rapino, the superstar of superstars for the USA women in town to take on the North Carolina Courage on Saturday night, hanging out with young soccer superstars. Great to have Megan Rapino here. She wants to be part of this great facility as well. You're in town and the greatest college program happens to be opening a new stadium. Of course you come over here 
And for those of you who aren't, we appreciate you joining us. Look at that list of how many events are going to be held thanks to the ACC Network kicking off. That brings even more coverage for ACC Network Extra that's been around for a while. If it were up to me, I'd be on every single one of those calls. <laughs> it's just not feasibly possible, though. Yeah, look at the events right there. Incredible. 450 total events, including a lot of love for the Olympic sports, which I'm a big fan of right there, Kyle. 260 Olympic sports events. Absolutely. Been doing that kind of sports for 10 years. That's where the bread and butter is for you and I. But the big-time ones are going to be on the network as well. And for North Carolina, it starts with a night game as they welcome Miami into Chapel Hill in just a couple of weeks. Exciting times. Congratulations to the ACC Network launching today at 7 o'clock and rolling on as we take a look at the first half highlights in this one, a 2-0 lead for North Carolina. Carolina came out of the gates and immediately started putting pressure on the goal. It didn't take long for them to break through a ball that was loose in the box. It was finally picked up, and it was Bridget Andrew Jeske who was able to put the first goal of the season in the back of the net for North Carolina. And, Dean, they didn't stop from there. After this goal, it seemed like the pressure just amped up. They got even more confidence. Rachel Jones knocked off the ball. Carolina gets the free kick. Russo with a great strike. And, again, it's picking up a loose ball rebound. Keeper doesn't secure this one. Pinto says, you know what? I'll take care of it and puts it in the back of the net. Gambone gets the assist. Her first point as a Tar Heel, as you see, the shots and shots on goal all in favor of the Tar Heels. It's just been, it was complete dominance. 45 minutes of North Carolina doing what they wanted. The one shot for Indiana came from distance, and it wasn't even on frame. They didn't threaten. They're going to need to make some big-time changes here, and I think they're going to need to take some extra uh, chances to try and get some offense going. That may leave them a little open and exposed on the backside, but you've got to get some forward players. All right, it'll be a new goalkeeper, which is standard fare for Chris Dukar, the goalkeeper coach for North Carolina. The two sports stars, she also plays basketball here at North Carolina, Claudia Dickey. The most impressive thing I saw from her last year had nothing to do with basketball and had nothing to do with her goalkeeping. It was in the Elite Eight to go to the College Cup. She stepped up for a PK and drilled one into the back of the net. Right then and there, you knew she had that big-time mentality. No surprise that she's in there for the second half. Anson Doran saluting her commitment to fitness as well in the preseason. Came in ready to go. And a testament to both goalies to split time and be okay with that and understand that that's how things work at this school. Takes a special kind of player. Not everybody would be able to do so. So we'll see what Erwin Van Benekom has in mind for this young Hoosier team that lost their top four leading scorers from a year ago to graduation. As you see Anson Dorrance patrolling the sidelines. Chris Dukar, Damon Nahas over there with them. Second half getting ready to start. For Carolina, it looks like everybody from the starting 11 back out there, except just now Julia Dorsey, number seven, came back onto the field. And Dorsey did get in for 12 minutes in that first half, as we told you she would, as Anson Dorrance bringing eight players on in that first half. It looks like Indiana is back to their starting 11 as well. Played out of the back. Talked about it right away as that game got underway. 4-3-3, but it was more of a five in the back for Indiana. See if they try and drop that fifth player back or if they push forward here in the second half. We can tell you that wearing the 27 jersey for Indiana out there is actually number seven, Sarah Wampler, the sophomore from Cincinnati. Went to St. Ursula Academy. She's on it right there. Normally wears number seven, but didn't have her jersey, so 27 is Sarah Wampler for the Hoosiers. As we're one minute in here, played over the top. And you see North Carolina will knock it out of bounds. 
Three Tar Heels placed on the Mac Herman Trophy preseason watch list. Taylor Otto, Brianna Pinto, and Alessia Russo. Hard to believe that Emily Fox is not also on that preseason Mac Herman Trophy watch list. I think sometimes players might get overlooked because the roster may be so loaded, but Emily Fox has gotten some caps with the U.S. national team, yet not on a Herman watch list. Okay. <laughs> She was, of course, on the ACC preseason player to watch list. Taylor Otto. It's going to be fun to watch her on a string with Pinto as they sit, stay side by side and run this midfield for the Tar Heels. Carolina 28-2-4 in all home matches over the past three seasons. But as we told you earlier, two of those seasons, hard to consider them home matches. They're more neutral matches as this team went everywhere. So did the men. North Carolina dropped over. Indiana will head it out. Jones. Sends it in, loose in front, still loose. Gambone has got an assist. She didn't look comfortable taking a shot with her left foot there. She had it at the feet, could have just taken the left-footed shot. Instead, she tried to switch it over to the right before taking. You'll see here the ball drops right to her feet, right there. Could have taken it with the left, but immediately turns around to the right. That's something that they'll work on. Yeah, you could see her dance around the ball to get it on her right foot, but by then it's too late. And even if your left foot isn't as good as the right, that's a situation where you just want to get it off and get it on frame quick. Doesn't have to be the perfect shot. Yeah, maybe even a toe poke would mm -hmm. work. Indiana. In possession. Thought maybe they were going to try to get a shot off against Dickey. One back there by Jones. Pushed to the ground. No whistles. It stays with North Carolina, and Jones stays with it. That probably would have been the best choice there, Dean, for two reasons. One, by pulling it back out, you allowed North Carolina to get some more numbers back and set up the defense and saw how easy was it for them to take away. The other one, Dickey just got into the game. Go ahead and test the new legs. See if she's loose and ready to go after a ball that's in an upper 90. North Carolina started this attack on the right side. Now it's over on the left side. Good ball in. Andrew Jeske's got one already. Almost had the second. Great ball served in to Andrew Jeske. She is really good in the air. Read that ball perfectly. Macy Bell over to Julia Dorsey. Two freshmen in that back line starting the second half for Coach Dorrance and the Tar Heels. They lead it 2-0 over Indiana. Downhill, North Carolina into the 18. Denied there by two Indiana jerseys. Jones gets a piece on it. Kept alive by Goff. Pinto sends it in. Taylor Otto stays with it. Not a warrant, a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina. Dean, with as many players as Indiana has back, somebody has to step up much sooner than they did and stop that run from Goff that initially got that ball down into the, the 18. Anna Pinto will head over to take the corner for the Tar Heels. Pinto, high, lofted ball. Hangs in the air. Goff gets a piece of it. Kept alive by Bell. Shot from distance there by Russo. But Indiana on the clearance. Look at the speed, though, tracking back. That's Russo who just took that shot. It's one of the things that makes her such a special player, the motor and the speed that Russo can turn on. Pinto. 
Good little dummy there by the freshman Gambone, hoping a white jersey was behind her. Not a bad idea. Pinto has Gambone near. Now Pinto with some space. Was going to try to bend it around or find Andrew Jeske. Neither one was there. I like the thought there, though. Everybody is back. Go ahead and take the shot when you create an opening. Just got underneath the ball a little bit. Pinto has looked solid here to start her sophomore campaign. The Daily Tar Heel with a spotlight on the Pinto life. Of course, mom and dad studs, her brothers studs. I mean, it's a big time soccer athletic family. Greedy family. Share the wealth. Give some <laughs> other people some of the athletic ability. <laughs> Bell, hard not to be impressed with that long, easy, gazelle-like stride she has in the back. Just looks effortless. Dorsey. I've hardly had to mention the junior from London in Wubenmoy. She's just solid as a rock as Jones will have it down near the touchline. Gambone can't get much on it, and it'll come back to Indiana. Roy Williams in the house with his wife, Wanda, out here to celebrate the home opener and also just this beautiful stadium. Yeah, out there supporting a fellow UNC coach, and I like the, the bling. He had to bring that out on, on the opening night of the ceremony. Hey, you've got 22 national championships. I've won a couple myself. <laughs> Andrew Jeske got it started for the Tar Heels in minute 13. And it will be a goal kick back to Indiana. Andrew Jeske found herself in that corner. Got bumped a little bit, tried to sell the call. Wasn't going to get it from the referee, though. Well, that time there wasn't even much pressure. It's almost as if they know it's coming, and it's a turnover. Indiana just trying to keep possession for just a little bit. As knocked off the ball there was Jamie Totleybin. Totleybin, a freshman from Wildwood, Missouri, Visitation Academy. Taylor Otto will change the point of attack over to Goff. Goff. Now Jones back to Russo. Russo sends it across. Copel gets a piece of it. It's loose. And Copel gets back to it before Andrew Jeske can pounce. Some tense moments there if you're an Indiana fan. A loose ball. We saw it twice in the first half, resulted in a Carolina goal. Great cross just off the fingertips. Nice job of sticking with it. Copel. As they try to build it out of the back. The Hoosiers. Macy Bell doesn't bite. Able to hold off. And it'll stay with North Carolina. We talked about the long, easy strides from Bell. She just used those long legs to leverage her body and keep possession after she took it away. Pinto. Even when you sit back against this North Carolina team, it's so tough because they don't have to attack from just one side of the field. They don't overload the left or the right. They can switch fields and come at you from anywhere. Telemach helped get it away from North Carolina, but once again, they play it back in North Carolina, even after they lose it. That high pressure, look at that, leads to a turnover. Otto has got it. Otto's going to take a shot. She felt that one. 
but not on frame. Relentless. It's the only word that comes to mind when you see this North Carolina team and that pressure. There is no breathing room for Indiana to try and get that ball moving forward. They're playing an east-west game right now. Anson Dorrance now sends six Tar Heel players to warm up. And the subs are going to be a little earlier for Carolina in the second half because they can re-enter. So the starters will come out, get a breather for about 15 minutes, and then come back in for those last 10 or 15 ready to go. Indiana gets a pass midfield. Kyle, if you are a first-year head coach, Erwin Van Bennekom, we talked about the fact that he felt like he had nothing to lose, but what are you going to try to accomplish here in the last 30-plus minutes? I think you need to try and find a way to build some offense, get something that you can take away from the game, feel good, and work on. Here's a nice ball over the top. Yeah, great ball. Cut inside, but handled there by Bell. Beautiful ball to try to find Davidson, and a good cut by Davidson. But a nice job by North Carolina. Good team defending. Tough, but smart on the defense there from Carolina. Pinto checks back to get a piece of it and picked up there by Dickey. Dickey, long outlet pass. Told you she also plays basketball. Back to your question for Indiana, they're just looking for things to build off of, things to feel good about. So you don't have to necessarily go out and score an equalizer, but get a couple of good looks, get some chances, and play better offense than you did in that first half. Copel able to take away the Andrew Jeske cross. Picked off there by Goff. Goff has been patient, right? She's been a valuable utility player. And I feel like she's ready, just like last year, Kimball, who had waited so long to get a chance. She was actually drafted in the NWSL after waiting that long. Who knows? Here's Andrew Jeske, who Anson Doran says is definitely a next-level player. Bell sends it in, cleared by Indiana. Tar Heels landed at number two in the United Soccer Coaches preseason poll. Exactly where they finished last year. Florida State number one. As we told you earlier, Florida State will take on Wisconsin right here on the ACC Network Sunday at 2 o'clock. Anson Dorrance. 41st season. He actually addressed the incoming freshman at Carmichael Arena a few days ago, getting the nod from the administration. And I don't know about you, but he would pump me up as a freshman coming into this beautiful university. And if you don't know who he is, you're going to find out really quick. Well, he opened with Michael Jordan and Mia Hamm talking about their legacy, which still lives on. Russo trying to drop it into space to Jones. Looking over at that bench, I think a line change is about to come for North Carolina. So Rachel Jones it's going to come out. Rumu Chirera is going to come in. Pinto. Russo. Tough touch for Otto as seven subs are waiting to come on for North Carolina. Otto lost it. Good defensive work there by Indiana, but boy, North Carolina so much pace in the back including the freshman Bell. And it's the pasting and Indiana having so many that are set back in the defense that they don't have anybody forward to help kind of put some pressure on that defense of Carolina. Six. 
Seven subs. Going to come in for the Tar Heels. I think they may all come in at the same time, too, Kyle. It's going to be a line change. A little flick. Andrew Jeske was hoping to find Gambone. Lucharera gets a piece of it. I like the no call there. Both players got to the ball at the same time. Avery Lockwood with a good tackle. The freshman from Belmont, Michigan. I like the fight of Indiana here in this second half. 2-0 at halftime. Not quite halfway through the second half, but still 2-0. Give the Hoosiers credit. They've definitely played a better second half defensively. They've gotten the ball forward a little bit more. Haven't been able to sustain any of that offense, though. Well said as Telemach had it for a second. Mutarera. I think she came right out of her shoe. Bell. Macy Bell, 25, freshman from Wichita, Kansas. That has been a trademark of Anson Dorrance forever, recruiting the entire country, the entire world. But I will say, in recent years, he has just gone right down the road. You've got an incredible club in North Carolina FC and then the North Carolina Courage Academy, and he's got a lot of players from the local area. And that's a huge factor and, and a benefit for them when you've got the reigning NWSL champions and that club that you can pick some players from, why not? It'll save you a little bit of travel too. You can be home a little more. But he told us those West Coast trips are to help out the players that get to go and have their family see them, but it's also to help the program out, help them with recruiting. Russo. Every time North Carolina is able to get a player from out West, it twofold makes them better and hurts some of their top competitors like the Stanfords that are out there. Stanford, UCLA, USC. Mm -hmm. Good programs. Pinto has been outstanding from the opening whistle. We'll see if she'll be part of this line change as Kyle Straub called it. Next opportunity as it Indiana player struggling there a little bit. I believe that's Madeline Carlson, the sophomore. I'm not sure if this is a cramp, but she's reaching towards the knee area. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a cramp. Training staff going to come on for Indiana. Yeah, you could just see that first step she took with the left leg. The knee kind of gave out from her a little bit. I didn't see what happened to injure her. May have hyperextended it the way that they're, they're stretching that leg out a little bit. Sophomore from Michigan. Gonna take a little time too, right? To adjust, new coach, new style. And it's tough, especially for a sophomore because you come in your freshman year and going from high school to college, you have to acclimate to the game and then get used to your coach's style of play. And now go ahead and forget that and get used to a brand new coach all over again. Erwin Van Benekom hiring Bree Young and Doug Starnes to join his staff. Emily Baston stayed on. And he talked about that on the United Soccer Coaches podcast about being an associate head coach. He had a pretty good idea of what he needed, and he was open about the facts. Like, look, I'm not perfect. I need to have people around me that can pick up on some of the things that maybe I'm not as good at. And that's what he did in putting his staff together. A lot of times when you, you're a new coach, you'll bring guys or coaches from where you were. 
try and keep some familiar faces. I like that he went out and got plum, some coaches from all around the country, different perspectives. And when I talked to Robbie Church, the head coach for Duke, he kind of alluded to that was the way that things were going to go with him. He's one of the great young minds in the game, and he doesn't mind going and seeing the perspective of somebody else and using that because maybe it's a better idea than what he would have. Bell. Nothing but praise from Coach Church. Well said. We talk about one of the great people of soccer, Robbie Church. Phenomenal human being. Dorsey crashes in, but they'll say off of Dorsey and back to Indiana. And now, finally, one, two, three, four, five more Tar Heels will get a chance to have a run. As Kyle Straub told you, though, there may be some re-entry here for the Tar Heels. I would probably expect about 25 they come in. About 12 and a half, 13 minutes of run, and then the starters will be back out there. Unless Ooh, Carolina... Big collision. Unless Carolina adds a goal or two to extend that lead, then you might see Anson go a little deeper into the bench. Boy, Maggie Pierce, watch this collision right here. Avery Lockwood. Freshman and Maggie Pierce of freshman. Moving Moy over the ball. Good weighted ball. Rumu Terrer got her head on it but over the crossbar. Couldn't quite angle that one down enough to get it on frame, but a nice ball served in by Wubin Moy. Right back to the pressure. Yeah, perfectly weighted ball by Wubin Moy as North Carolina now 12 shots to just one for Indiana. And that one for Indiana came early in the first half from distance. And this is where I think Indiana, though, has played a better game, Dean. If you remember, it was four shots, all four on goal for Carolina. They're at 12 shots, but still only four on goal. The last eight have been off frame. Mary Elliott McCabe, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina, gets a run. Goff stays in there. Going to go out of bounds, back to the Hoosiers again. Shalom back in there for Indiana. She saw 16 minutes of action in the first half. This is better from the Hoosiers. That final pass, though, Ruben Moy, ready for it. She's a player that Anson really raved about her conditioning. Said it's as good as anybody he's ever had before. So the foul in North Carolina will allow Indiana to try to get some red jerseys in and around the 18. Let's see if they can boom it that long, get a little flick, and try to add to that just one shot so far. Not a single shot on goal yet, Kyle. You're just looking for a good opportunity here. Into the 18. Headed out of there, though, by Goff. Second ball, one back by Indiana. Miss hit, and... Dickey will take her time. 21-30 remaining here in this one. 2-0 North Carolina. I think that ball just sailed a little bit on the free kick. They would have liked it to be at the top of the 18. Sailed a little bit deeper into the box, and Indiana couldn't get back in time. Duke and North Carolina on Sunday. That's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be nice weather. I think there's going to be a lot of fans in this stadium. And from what I have heard, a lot of former Tar Heels going to be in town to help open this stadium up. 
Yeah, North Carolina has such a successful program that they don't just do one alumni weekend. They do two alumni weekends so the players can pick when they want to come. Half of them will be here this weekend and then half of them will be here, I believe, a weekend in October, I was told. And part of that is because it's so successful. You have so many of them playing in professional leagues and they're not just local but overseas you alluded to it a little bit part of the reason that carolina was able to play leon in a exhibition because of a former tar heel lucy bronze who was just brilliant at the icc last weekend at wake Met soccer park for leon as they knocked off the courage one to nothing little step over here for cox cox stays with it down near the end line tried to drop it back as making that run along with her was clanky so Clanky wearing number 26, the freshman, and Izzy Cox, the freshman from Greensboro. Boy, she has looked really good off the bench. She has. There's the future of Carolina, the two freshmen making the run. On it now is Lois Joel, another one of those players from England we told you about. Beautiful trap there by Strickland. They get it out wide, tough ball to handle in Indiana. Let's see if they can hold it long enough to create some. They just bomb it long. Only one player up there. Dickey way out of her box and hits it middle of the field. She committed to coming off her line really early in that play, and it could have been a dangerous one. Ruben Moy, I think, running hip to hip with her, slowed her down a little bit and allowed Dickey to get out there in time. It's also probably not a move that you see happen if it's not a two goal lead right now for Carolina. Muterrera gives it away, Indiana. Gives it right back though. One back though, again by Indiana. Good run for Telemach. Maggie Pierce, another one of those local players, freshman from Cary, North Carolina. Of course, Damon Nahas, longtime phenomenal coach. His brother Sean Nahas as well, done a great job coaching the young women in the area. And as a foul, an opportunity here for the Tar Heels. This was just a little bit too long of a run. Somebody for Indiana has got to step up earlier and the forearm shutter to the face. Free kick opportunity here now. Lota Wubenmoy. Three person wall for Indiana. Wubenmoy. Goes all the way through. It'll come back to the Hoosiers with under 18 minutes remaining in this one. Nice bend on that one. That's all about timing right there. So Indiana... Gonna make a sub, and so is North Carolina. As Madison Schultz, the senior from Edmonds, Washington, will come back into the game for Anson Dorrance and the Tar Heels. Mucherrera, Mary Elliott McCabe. Schultz saw the second most minutes off the bench in that first half. She played 15. Goff, driven in, flicked. And it'll be a corner kick for the Tar Heels. Clunky was the only one who played more, and she only had one minute extra. It's a nice ball served in, and that would have been on frame had it not been for that defender at the top of the box getting ahead on it. Corner kick, Tar Heels. Trying to add to that 2 nothing lead. Still loose, bouncing around. And cleared out of there by Indiana. For me personally, Dean, I like that kind of a cross. The driving cross versus the looping one that everybody can kind of figure out where it's going. Get the ball where you want it to go quickly. 
and hope that if it doesn't get there, it loosens in the box and you can pick it up. Well said as Schultz spins and loses it. Schultz wins it right back. North Carolina, they'll lose it sometimes, but they'll have it back within seconds. No one warming up at the moment for UNC. Maggie Pierce sends a ball in, trying to find Cox. Mary Elliott McCabe. Schultz. Schultz tried to turn on that ball, but her first touch had to get away from her. Better Just touch to that time, out. right, to Goff. Schultz trying to give and go. Cox was also there. Corner kick for the Tar Heels. Cox just a little bit late getting to that spot. Did a good job of redirecting, but because she was late, it was off frame. Don't forget, 12 o'clock right here on ACC Network Extra, North Florida and LaSalle. And then Duke and North Carolina at 6 o'clock on Sunday. Corner kick here for the Tar Heels. There's that high lofted ball. Not Kyle Straub's preference, Mucharera. Sends it back where it came from, and Indiana will have it. Just think those balls that sit in the air long enough allow the defense to gather around it. Makes it too hard for the offense to score. Coach Dorrance, you wonder if he's going to bring the starters back in. Now it looks like he is. A couple of head nods. You must have read his mind or he read your mind one way or the <laughs> other, Dean. I'll tell you what, my first exposure to Anson Dorrance was in, you weren't even born probably, it was 1989 at training camp in Santa Barbara with the U.S. women. Come on, I was five at that time. And <laughs> that team was loaded, right? Michelle Akers, April Heinrichs, who played at North Carolina, Karen Gabara, then the youngsters, Mia Hamm and Julie Foudy. And I remember being in a meeting when he was firing up the team, and he talked about having so much grit that your intestines can turn into diamonds and like they all got <laughs> fired up and I tell you it was a tipping point moment for me because I fell in love with the game because of his passion when I was still in college it was uh, I'll never forget it Anson I still talk about it you're not the only one who he's made fall in love with the game I can guarantee you that a whistle here and another opportunity for the Tar Heels Isabel Cox goes by Izzy, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, Grimsley High School. What a great target to have on free kicks like this one. As Lois Joel over the ball. That one had a little more drive to it. Kept alive by the Tar Heels. It'll fall to the top of the 18. Hit well there by Maggie Pierce. And cleared out. So here comes the re-entry of one, two, three, four, five, six Tar Heels with the score 2 nothing and 12, 20 plus remaining here in this game. Just got to sit down, catch their breath, rest those legs for 12 and a half minutes. Now it's 100% the rest of the game. Meanwhile, Indiana has been out there. They've been playing without as many subs. Legs are going to be tired. You're going to see a difference here the last 12 minutes of the game. Off the throw in. North Carolina keeps possession. No problem though for Indiana's Bethany Copel, who has pretty much been the mainstay goalkeeper since arriving in Bloomington by way of Michigan. So Pinto and Otto back in there, as well as Gambone, Russo. Also back in there, as is Andrew Jeske and Jones also. All the attacking players back in there. Anson doesn't usually mess around with the back line. The defense usually stays in there for the 90. It is what it is, and that continuity is something that he wants to keep intact. But the midfield, the forwards, you need to be fresh out there. It's kind of like Dean Smith back in the day. Go and run until you're tired. Let me know when you are. I'll take you out. When you're ready to go back in, we'll put you in.
Here's Bell. Andrew Jeske. Dorsey. Andrew Jeske. Scored the first goal of the game in minute 13. Pinto added one four minutes later, and that's where we stand, two to nothing. Another good opportunity here for North Carolina. That was a nice individual effort by Andrew Jeske. First, she split the two defenders, got to that final line, and earned the team in the corner. Russo driven in. Deflected there by Copel, still loose. And cleared by Indiana. 14 shots, five on goal for North Carolina. One shot, none on goal for Indiana. They've had to make three saves. Fouls dead even, corners lopsided. Seven for North Carolina, now eight. And just one for Indiana. Russo to take the corner. Last one she smoked in there. This one a little more loft, far post. It'll bounce far side, set back across. Pinto comes over, Pinto dances with it. Oh my, and Pinto's got the brace. North Carolina on top, three to nothing. Dean, that ball was passed into the midfield, and I'm not sure if she was the one it was intended for, but when we see this replay, she comes in on a head of steam. She knew she wanted this ball. Watch her come in. Uh-uh, this one's mine. One step back to the left foot and just found a way to sneak it through. Manson said she's gonna be a special player this year. Showing it on night one. You're right. She just, there was a North Carolina player sitting there waiting for it. I think it was Dorsey, but Pinto ran it down and was thinking shot the entire time, Kyle. And she's got two, and it's 3 nothing North Carolina under nine minutes remaining. Her mom and dad and at least one of her brothers are here. Saw them earlier before the game during that long delay as this game was supposed to start around 635 started closer to 835 but it hasn't stopped the tar heels up three nothing i told you at halftime the quote that anson gave us about dino was how he was the perfect foil for him because he was the shark in the water that mentality it it carries through into the players and you could see it right there the aggressiveness the pinto had to go get that ball and score that goal A little over eight minutes remaining. The Hoosiers have had a couple glimpses here in the second half. Good defensive plays, trying to break free, but that back line of North Carolina, even after they make a mistake, just absolutely will shut you down. Jones. Erwin Van Bennekam doesn't like that call. He thought it was going back to Indiana. Still showing some fire over there. His first game as the head coach after four outstanding years at Duke. One of the things that made him so successful was that positive thinking. And of course, game one of year one, the last thing he's going to do is stop rooting for the team, stop coaching. He wants to have what we just talked about with Anson. His personality come through when the girl's out on the field. Dorsey. Touched near the end line. Dorsey will earn another corner kick. Corner kicks now. Well, now they're going to say it's off of Dorsey. Oh, I was My with bad. you. I thought that was, should have been a corner for Carolina. Looked like she was thinking cross, got pushed off the ball, and at the last second played it off of the defender. Must have been a little too late.
Bell to Pinto. Pinto. Two goals. Her first step is just so quick. Gives it up to Jones, and Jones miss hits it. Talked about a lot of firsts. Shiny new control room, same outstanding crew. Evan Badler, Joe Farrar, Lauren Davis, Austin Edwards, Brian Ware, Matt Bachman, Alex Carlson, Noah Seidenberg, Ryan Moeller, Tim Arms. Fantastic crew, as well as Christina, Chip, and Kevin. First rate, Kyle. The pressure coming again. Pinto. Good job by Taylor Otto to come back and win it back. Andrew Jeske. No problem for Copel. Mentioned those 41 years. I feel like he's been there for all 41. Dave Losey, longtime SID. He has been there since the inception of the women's program. So. Incredible. He was actually just inducted into the Hall of Fame this past offseason for SIDs. Thank him and Bobby Hunley and then Caitlin Davis from Indiana. As we've got four minutes and 40 seconds. You're Indiana. You're looking toward UIC. What do you take away from this game? Playing the number two team in the country. Hang on. As they almost... Gave it away right there. If you're Erwin Van Vennecom, what do you take into that home game against UIC on Sunday? I think one of the things they can take away is that defensively, I think they're a pretty solid club. They've been on their heels playing defense for 85 plus minutes. Of course, you're going to give up some goals to the best team or the number two team in the country. But I think overall, their defense is pretty solid. They just need to find a way to work up through the midfield to, to spark that attack. The ball's over the top against some of the top teams. It's just not going to get it done. And it's not like they're going to face this relentless pressing the rest of the season as well with the 22-plus players that Anson Dorrance brings at you. Foul called against Goff in North Carolina. Would be really nice for Indiana is if in the last 320 of this game, you can somehow sneak a goal in, leave Chapel Hill without getting shut out. We'll see if that happens. If it doesn't, it'll be the 597th time North Carolina has shut out a team in 962 games. Gambone, she can play, folks. She's got a little Wayne Rooney creativity as well. Speaking of creativity, Megan Rapino in the house. What a treat, right, for those young soccer fans. Oh, I mean, that that right there is the top of the heap. That's who every little young girl that watched the World Cup a couple of months ago, that's who they want to meet. That's who they idolize. She's taken that mantle from Abby Wambach, who had it before her. And you can go all the way back to somebody who used to play here, Mia Hamm. Yeah. Carly Lloyd had it for a little while in there, yep. too. Four players going to get a chance to come on for Indiana. Pinto. Gambone. Knocked away there by Megan Wampler, sophomore from Indiana. Fans. Despite the long delay, still loud and proud here as UNC 
Talk about a team deserves a spectacular stadium. It's the 22-time national champion, North Carolina Tar Heels. This stadium was long overdue for this program. Well, and but it was a, we a wait that was well worth it. Though. Yeah, and it's worth saying that it's not just the women's team that's fantastic. Carlos Samuano has done an amazing job with the men's team, and then Jenny Levy and Joe Bresci for the women's and men's lacrosse teams are We're talking pretty. about four programs that are all national championship winning programs. There you go. Bubba Cunningham, the athletic director, was out here early. Excited about the launch of the network. Excited about this first game for the Tar Heels. As 40 seconds counting down. And as usual, North Carolina will start off 1-0. And most importantly, start off 1-0 in your brand new facility that we just talked about that took so long for them to finally get. You don't want to open it up with a bad taste in your mouth. Start off 1-0 here and start off the season 1-0. They'll be tested on Sunday by Robbie Church and the Duke Blue Devils as the final seconds counting down as Erwin Van Bennekom. You know that he'll have his team ready for UIC on Sunday as we congratulate him on getting the head coaching job at Indiana. But it's the 41-year top man Anson Dorrance and the Tar Heels behind two goals from Miss Pinto, a 3-0 win for North Carolina. Anson told us Andrew Jeske was gonna have a breakout year. Pinto was gonna be a superstar. Both of those players really stepped up today. Two goals for Brianna Pinto. Helps to lead Carolina this three nothing dominating win. Number eight already getting votes for the Mac Herman Trophy with that performance. North Carolina, their first ever game at the beautiful UNC Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium. And they celebrate with a three nothing win over Indiana. We'll be back with more.
Historic night for the UNC women's soccer team. Their first ever game in this beautiful North Carolina soccer and lacrosse stadium. Brianna Pinto with two goals, part of a 3-0 win over Indiana. Dean Linky with Kyle Straub. Let's take a look at the highlights in this Tar Heel victory. A lot of impressive play from the young players for North Carolina, but it was a couple of the upperclassmen that got, it, uh, got things started. Otto on the back end of the cross, puts it back into the box. Bridget Andrzejewski finds it, gets a loose ball, and puts North Carolina on the board 1-0. And then, as you said, Brianna Pinto with two goals today. The first one in the first half. Gambone, the freshman, on the opposite end of it, finds Pinto right in front of the face of the goal, and she does the rest. Nice little heel flick from Pinto. Off balance, too, just showing the athleticism. And then she went and did it all on her own. She said, I've had enough of this in the second half. Intercepts a pass that may not have even been meant for her, but everybody's going to be okay with it when you have a finish like this. With her left foot, driving it from 20 yards to make it 3 nothing. Just a dominant performance from her. She was all over the field tonight for North Carolina, and you can see why Coach Dorrance is so high on her and thinks she's going to be one of the best players in the country. 16 shots for North Carolina. Dominating. All 90 minutes were North Carolina from the very beginning. That one shot for Indiana, an outlier, was away from the goal, not on frame. It was the Tar Heels from the opening minute to the closing minute. All right, for Evan Badler and his great crew, my broadcast partners, Kyle Straub, I want to thank all the fans for sticking around to watch this one as UNC with a 3 nothing win in their first ever game. They'll take on Duke on Sunday, 6 o'clock, right here on ACC Network Extra. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports.